Danica Jackson with Interesting Houston, here with one of my very dearest friends, Victoria Hollier, Houston's very own Duchess of Montrose. Hello everyone. We decided to do a special segment on a different part of the influencer community today. And when Christina, founder of Union of the Fifth, met Victoria, she loved the idea of doing a transgender segment. So we want to talk to Victoria. I knew Victoria before she was Victoria. And um, it's been amazing to see the beautiful transformation and you starting to really match. I know, I'm gonna cry. Um, your outside with your inside. And so we wanted to ask some questions about tying it into fashion and philanthropy. What are some of the charities that matter most to you and why? Some of the charities that I would say matter the most to me are of course ones that focus not on not solely on the transgender community, but also charities that have a more macro scope that kind of help a, a wider range of people and different influences. So educating people on different issues important to the transgender community or yeah, it can be, um, I really particularly like, of course, LGBT causes, um, but mainly I would probably say like maybe, um, this might be a shameful plug, but Houston Children Give Back, I think is a remarkable organization, and um, I, I would love to see more children be able to give back in the future. Wonderful, thank you, and that's one of my charities. <laughs> um, one thing that you started in this whole process was you actually started your own charity. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so um, myself and then one of my first transgender women that I ever met, we started an organization um, that is far promoting the excellence of transgender women across the city and hopefully across the nation. Um, we are really focusing on minute details, building a support system that other trans people can build. Um, we're focusing on the tiny skills that we need to develop um, when we go into our new bodies and our new lives and how we can make sure that those are all translated very easily. What are some examples? Well, um, there are, of course, your your new um, body. Of course, you have to figure out what undergarments are the proper ones to wear. Um, but of course, you can go as much as um, etiquette and how to sit and how to, wow. um, yeah, and how to behave in society. But, I mean, makeup is a big one, a big one. A lot of, I mean, a lot of trans women that grow up through their whole life not wearing makeup, and now they're thrown into this world where, where lashes are involved. <laughs> oh. So, before you discovered that you were transgender, you were already the Duchess of Montrose, and I remember the first time we met, how beautifully you were dressed, and we were at an art event, and it was really fantastic. We all wanted to know what shoes you were wearing, and you just were this perfect embodiment of a woman, even though at that time you identified as a gay male. What made you just realize, what was the light bulb moment that clicked? Well, before this time, that was really all the exposure I had to the way I felt, was that I was born a male and I was still attracted to men, so the only way I could put those two together was to be a gay man. Um, I didn't know there was another option. Uh, whenever I was brought on by another trans organization to chair their, uh, their annual fundraising gala, I got to meet these other trans women, and I got to hear their stories, and they just resonated with me in such a powerful and profound way that it just felt right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, it's been a remarkable journey so far. I know, I, I remember when you told us, and I said, maybe we knew. <laughs> uh, well, I could say her cry about it because I love you so much. But um, I'm going to tie it back in to Union and Fifth and fashion. Something that you mentioned that your nonprofit does is uh, help new women figure out what are undergarments and how to dress appropriately. So, what are some of the differences that you noticed in your wardrobe? And how you dress as a feminine gay man versus a transgender woman. What are some of the biggest changes you've had to make? Yeah, I think the most thing that resonates to my mind are the new shapes that we're taking on. You know, there are differences in the male form versus the female form. And you really have to figure out what works for you now, what works for your body shape. 
Some women have um, a triangle shape, some women have an hourglass, and the same thing goes for trans women. We still have those different curves that we now have to relearn how to dress ourselves. And I mean, shopping for your first bra is not an easy or, or an awkward task, so <laughs> it's, it's a good one. <laughs> so what are some of the favorite brands that you like now that you find fit your new shape better? Well, when it comes to shopping, I definitely try to look at my local designers to try to give back to my community and hopefully that, that's reciprocated to give back to the community itself. Um, you know, designers like uh, Miles David or Nicholas Wynn, if you find this, or Mysterious by MP in. Um, but I would say like the big designers are going to be Dior. And then that's why I kind of love looking on Women of Fit is because I can get those designers that I like. Uh, really awesome discount, but plus a good cost. Now, although you are young in years, you are the Duchess of Montrose, and you are a huge influencer in the community, whether it was before or now as a transgender woman. What are some words of wisdom that you would give, not just to uh, your own community and people who might be thinking about whether the transition is something that's right for them, but also to those outside of your community who need to know, you know, the appropriate things to say or do or how to be supportive. I would definitely say the most important thing is having that support system. Having good friends around who are going to support you through the thick and the thin, um, especially if you have an amazing girlfriend like Annika who can <laughs> tell you about what it's like to go shopping for bras and, and the different tra uh, transitions your bodies are going to your body's going to make, having someone there just to listen to, and that is honestly the best thing you can do for yourself. Uh, for anybody who's questioning or they have more questions, I would say you need to get out there and ask questions if you're just talking to yourself and trying to mull this over. You're never going to get anywhere. And what are some resources that you used? Are there some online resources that people can look at? Or? Well, definitely. Um, at every, I would say, community health center, you're going to find some pamphlet or some uh, flyer about a trans organization that meets. We actually have several in Houston. It's not just the, the organization, organization I'm a part of. So, I mean, there's a profound amount of, of ways you can find that. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. And can't wait for you to see Victoria's photo shoot and lovely clothes and touches from you made of this.